Cyberpunk 2077 is frankly one of the most hyped games ever. The, well, at least former industry darling CD Projekt Red coming off The Witcher 3, the huge star power of people including the likes of Keanu Reeves and Grimes, and an exceptionally long development time, this looked like it would be a generationally defining game. And this review is going to be exploring Cyberpunk 2077 as a video game. There's going to be very limited CDPR drama in this video, and I'm going to separate performance slash bugs into their own section, if only because I'm assuming that this is the worst that it'll ever be, and it'll only get better over time. So please consider using the timestamps to navigate around this video. And yeah, if you found this video helpful or entertaining, throw a, lit, throw a like, consider subscribing for more reviews, and let me know what you are thinking of Cyberpunk 2077 right about now. So Cyberpunk 2077 is a Western role-playing game. What makes a role-playing game good? At least to me, well, that's going to be the basis for if this game is any good, and I'm going to go off of the points of player agency, character customization, an immersive setting, immersive stories to help shape your character and as always is the gameplay any fun i think these core aspects really help to elevate a role-playing game if done to perfection let's start with the setting because night city is one of if not the most important characters in cyberpunk 2077 if night city does not work then the game does not work period which is part of why i want to talk about this right out of the gate the city is broken up into several districts and there's a sizable desert outskirt which helps provide some visual variety within the city though there are several interiors which are just impeccably de decorated but unfortunately the city does not fully come to fruition i live in philadelphia and i can just say Night City does not feel like a city. More specifically, it feels like about 25% of a city. The verticality and density is there, but the size simply is not. And it's also kind of weird that you go straight from desert to dense urban with zero suburban in between. Just is a little bit jarring. But within this super dense city is, well, not much. You're essentially working with an empty shell. In fact, it kind of reminds me of old GTA games where you couldn't really enter any buildings. You are extremely limited in what you can interact with. Most of what you can enter is tied to quests, and there's very limited meaningful interactions and interiors you can enter outside of quests. Even things that you would assume, like food stands, are few and far between, even though there's plenty of food stands, only a handful are actual, actually interactable, and what is there is almost meaningless. Food, drinks, sex stores, mostly worthless, mostly selling garbage, or mostly selling things that pretty much serves no purpose in the game. NPC AI is also immersion breaking. The NPC density is fine and actually pretty surprising in city center just how dense it is, but they react really strangely. For example, just simply bumping into someone without even a weapon drawn causes every NPC in the area to go into a panic and that cycle can't be reset. They just all run away and cower and it's very awkward. Car AI is simply atrocious. Uh, they drive extremely slow and they don't follow any street directions whatsoever. It's it's just, it, it's immersion breaking is the problem with these things. Even though they are simple and really don't change the game that much, you're supposed to feel like Night City is a huge part of this game and not just uh, something to laugh at. And ultimately, yeah, that's why Night City kind of falls short. Mostly a husk and what is there can often be immersion breaking. Let's talk about gameplay though, because it doesn't matter how cool your setting is, doesn't matter how good your story is, the game's gotta be fun to play. So what exactly are you gonna be doing in Night City? Well, you take on a series of gigs, and gigs are basically quests in Cyberpunk 2077. Some of them are your main quest, and some of them are side quests. Additionally, there are a ton of micro quests. You know, you're walking down a street corner and you see someone being assaulted, you can take out the baddies and get a reward for that. Gigs drive the core of the gameplay in Cyberpunk 2077. Not a whole lot to do or gain by just simply roaming around without being uh, objective driven via a gig. Staying objective driven is pretty key to the experience, and gigs are broken down into a few common parts. You usually get a phone call from someone asking you for help, 
they usually come up with a weird excuse why they can't just tell you what they want over the phone, so you have to go meet them in person. You exchange a dialogue with that person, you execute the task that they tell you to do, which could be combat or something else, driving, investigating, hacking, etc. And then you have more dialogue to wrap the quest up. It's pretty standard fare for open world quests, but I do want to go into each of those aspects and talk about how they either succeed or fail. Let's start with the quest UI before we even get into the quest. It is absolute hot garbage. There's weird titles, and yeah, I know that a lot of these are just pop references, and they're cute, but they're not helpful for you understanding what the hell you're supposed to be doing. Uh, the objectives change and snap weirdly. Uh, oftentimes, if you finish a quest or if a quest gets failed, it'll just automatically snap you to another quest without you really knowing or the objective that's highlighted might not be the one that you would think you'd want to do next. So that's a bit annoying. You can only ever see one objective on your minimap at any given time. And yeah, there's no way to organize these quests, at least that I could find. Well, once you pick your quest, you're going to, like I said, be engaging in a phone call. And the phone, eh, not that great UI. Most people don't pick up for a stray call, unlike in something like the Blair Witch, which I found a little disappointing. What's the point of having all these contacts if they're just going to leave you hanging? There's rarely a time where you can call them and just kind of have a conversation with them. And texting feels weird because people respond absolutely immediately, but they'll like type massive paragraphs immediately. Eh, I don't know. It could have worked better. Also, your responses are usually either one response or just a couple of responses, which kind of is like, why are we even texting? It, it doesn't work. Other games, like I mentioned, Blair Witch and Grand Theft Auto did the phone much better uh, several years earlier, but it works. It's serviceable. Anyways, the best part about the phone is you're able to carry out pretty much whatever you're doing while taking the phone call. But after that phone call, yeah, you're going to want to go to the quest location. Driving in this game is serviceable, but not what I would call fun, partially because of the driving AI that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I mean, cars are okay to drive. The thing that really kills driving is the navigation system. I mean, this is the perfect game to have an on-road UI, either in the HUD of your car where the next turns are shown in your HUD. Like, we literally have cars that do this in 2020. Or, uh, car or directions that show up on road signs just naturally, you know, like a sign that'll just say turn left or just like put the damn directions, embed them onto the street because what happens is you end up looking at that super small mini map on the top right hand corner of your screen and you're driving really fast. So what happens a lot and you're taking a lot of sharp turns, what happens a lot is the GPS will basically you'll be going like 110 miles an hour and the GPS will say, oh, take this 90 degree turn. You don't have enough time to react to it. It looks rough. Also, you're just staring at this dotted mini map on the right hand of your screen. You're not taking in Night City. You're focusing on directions when they could have so easily embedded that into the world of the game. And I know people might be saying, well, you're kind of being picky here. I'm not being picky here because they literally have it in the game for the racing side quest. You literally do exactly what I'm saying where they embed directions into the road. It works fine and you're able to really just take in the scenery while you're doing it. It's frustrating the way that they executed driving in this game. Dialogue. Once you hit your quest location, you're going to engage in dialogue with the character who gave you the quest. And dialogue varies. We're going to get more into how dialogue works during the character section of the review. Basically, uh, occasionally you'll be driven around or need to wait for something to happen, and that can be a little painful. Like, you'll get in the car with someone, and it's just, it, there's a lot of awkward silence and awkward pauses. But like I said, we're going to talk more about dialogue later. But then the actual task. Let's, let's talk about what we can do. Side tasks are mostly run-of-the-mill open world stuff you're going to be doing races you're going to be sleuthing for people etc those i mean those are fine that's how it is for every normal open world game you can imagine what those are like the other big part is combat and combat's mainly split between hacking guns and melee the game usually lets you go stealth at the beginning and stealth is okay with your hacking and the ways that you can do lethal and non-lethal takedowns. What sucks about stealth is once you get caught, that's it. There's no way to reset the guards or calm them down. And I think that alone would have done wonders for the combat. 
I mean, stealth games like Metal Gear Solid, if you alert the guards, they stay in an alert phase, but they don't automatically know where you are 100% of the time. And that's just uh, a little frustrating with this game. Hacking, though, is surprisingly effective with lots of interactables. I was surprised at the number of things that you could actually hack and the effectiveness of what you could hack. Melee is pretty much like most Bethesda Melee, kind of flat, shallow, and easy. Nonetheless, it's still pretty fun to hack people up with a katana. I actually found Melee to be one of the more effective forms of combat in Cyberpunk 2077. Gunplay is fine with decent variety of guns and a ton of guns at your disposal, and health is mostly gained back with these weird inhalers. I'm not a huge fan of these weird inhalers. Basically, you can hit a button to boost some health back and give yourself the ability to regen health faster. The problem with these inhalers are they're overly abundant to the point where regenerating health seems more appropriate than using these inhalers. I mean, I think I, you start the game with like 30 of them, and by the end of the game, I had close to 100 of them, and I was using them as liberally as I wanted. So it was just like, why do we even have these weird inhalers? I get that it's a, a gameplay mechanic, if you will. Instead of hiding in cover, you have the power to give yourself health as needed with this consumable, and I do prefer that to just pausing the game and boosting your health, like in something like Zelda. But, uh, I don't know, it didn't come together great in my opinion. And unfortunately, it's pretty easy to get randomly one shot from mines and stuff like that. There are bosses, and I'll admit they are a nice mix up to the otherwise bullet spongy enemies. The thing that bugs me most about the combat, though, is there is so much to engage with. There's guns, there's modifications, there's attachments, there's body mods, there's crafting, there's clothing with mods. And you never really need to use any of it. The game never explains any of it. And you never need to engage in it, or it doesn't it, it doesn't really help you with the game. I mean, yes, it helps you, but you can get by just fine not even knowing any of this exists, and the game doesn't encourage you to take part in it. And that's a damn shame, especially considering the tedious opening tutorial, which we're going to be talking about a bit later. The thing that really kills me is so many quests have zero gameplay. Oftentimes, you'll get a call, you'll go to the place, you'll stand there, and then the quest is over. You will literally get a call, drive in this kind of shitty driving to this place, talk to the character, and the quest ends. And I get that it's for story development, but man, that is a big waste of time. There's so much downtime in Cyberpunk 2077. There's also a ton of quests that force you to just wait a day. Like you're engaged in a quest, you're doing this racing tournament and you just won first place in a race and the character says, all right, I'll call you in a few days and maybe we'll do the next race. Hope you don't forget about me. Hope you don't forget about this fun quest we're having. And it's like, what the fuck? This isn't fun. It's not fun to just wait a day. And of course you can skip time in this game, but it, uh, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. Ultimately the gameplay works, but it never goes above or beyond. And scenarios are usually pretty bland, and combat does not demand you to really grasp, grasp and engage in all the systems. Let's talk about player agency for a minute. For a game that lets you customize your genitals. Actually, wait a minute. What the fuck? <laughs> Why are there so many penis options but only one vagina option, Cyberpunk 2077? I don't... Uh, th whatever. We can get into that later, but that just seems like a huge, weird strange oversight and I it doesn't make any sense to me regardless player agency is huge for open world RPGs you should be able to shape your character and the game should actively advocate and promote that behavior cyberpunk does not support player agency your character is immutable after creation I hope you like the nails you picked cuz good luck finding a place to do your nails I hope you like the hair you picked cuz in 2077 we ain't doing haircuts easily conversations are largely linear and straight-up broken and immersion breaking uh, I've reloaded several uh, conversations to see how a quest would outcome differently depending on choosing different choices and you largely end up with the same conclusion. There are exceptions to this rule, but largely you're on a linear track, which sucks. You're often led down a linear path with the option to ask about lore. Basically, you're forced into this linear conversation, and if you have questions about things, you can get that explained. 
The thing that sucks is conversations are voiced to be heard in an exact order, so skipping or breaking bits can cause really weird, jarring voice acting changes that can pull you out of the experience. I know this is every esoterical YouTube gamer's favorite vocabulary word, but ludonarrative dissonance is a huge problem in this game. One example that immediately comes to my mind, but stuff like this happens all the time in Cyberpunk 2077, is you have a good friend who passes away and there's no way that you can alter that. Uh, and one of the quests is to go find some thing for his funeral. You go into his house, you literally raid his house. Like, you just start picking shit up. You're like, oh, this is his favorite vodka. Guess I'll fucking take it. Like, that's, that's, you just pick up all of your friend's treasured things and like joke about it. It's, it's weird. I mean, this is the kind of game where you want to press F to pick everything up because, you know, they're crafting materials, they're guns, they're clothes. But you just like walk into people's apartment, and start like raiding their house. And it, it makes more sense in a game like Fallout where there's reason for that, right? It's a wasteland. It's every man for himself. These homes are not really occupied by anyone. But in Cyberpunk, everyone's house is occupied. You're just stealing their stuff like a dick. But there's no, like, stealing like there is in Bethesda. It really doesn't work. I don't know. You're often forced into combat scenarios where you need to kill a large amount of people. There's not really a way to do this without, play this game without killing anyone. I think CDPR said you can do a no-kill run. I do not believe that for a second. And there are rarely branching paths. It is possible but rare to lock yourself out of a quest line. And what this means is that you're a cop supporter while being a cop hater. You're a corp sympathizer while also working to destroy them. And by not locking you out of quest lines or providing meaningful alternatives, you're actively encouraged to do all of this. And that's some gamer brain shit. Like gamers do all the side quests or, you know, people who are really into these games do all the side quests. And that makes you as a character an uninspired mess. It would be like in Skyrim if you, when you get to pick what side of the uh, army you want to be on, if you want to be on the Stormcloak side or the Imperial side, if you just got to do both of them. Because why the hell not? You get to see everything, right? Isn't that what you wanted? No, you have to, you should be forced down a path, in my opinion, to help shape your character and have those decisions actually mean something. And even your background, you get to pick a character life path at the beginning of the game that doesn't amount to anything you get awkwardly forced into being a low tier criminal even if you pick the corporation path which was a bit disappointing without spoiling anything the multiple endings don't promote choices or character but rather just game completion or arbitrary knowledge of the game there's really no meaningful ending that has anything to do with choices you've made it's all about how many quests have you completed in specific quests at that that it's, it's arbitrary and, and frustrating. But since we've talked about player agency, let's talk about character customization. There's a ton of stuff to work with, but like I said, of course, only one vagina. Let's not get too crazy, guys. It's disappointing that you can't change your appearance after you build your character. And there's a ton of customization for guns, clothing, mods, hacking, etc., which is all cool, but like I said in the gameplay portion, it's not really necessary to make progress in the game. You can touch all of it, or you can touch none of it. It's really up to you, and I guess it's cool that there's all these systems to engage with, but I do wish that the quests actively promoted you engaging in these systems and teaching you about these systems. Let's talk about the stories of Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt Red is known for making side quests that can be as long as entire games, and as good as entire games, and sometimes this is no exception. Some of these quests are massive and sprawling. I did rescues and sandstorms. I did a shooting challenge where I only where I had to take shots between stations, like like alcohol shots, not gunshots. Took alcohol shots before I, before I took the gunshots. It was cool. I investigated on a cheating girlfriend. I smuggled a surgeon out of Japan into Night City. When it all comes together, the stories work and are largely well voiced but rarely fail to shine due to the bloated dialogue and fluff surrounding them with the gameplay. What consistently lands in the stories of Cyberpunk 2077 are the characters. They are largely memorable, they're very well acted, and you do tend to bond with them over time just in the way that CDPR has you doing multiple quests with the same character and you really get to build out a little relationship with them. 
it's a little too bad that the linearity and lack of player agency holds back the potential of the presentation that CD Projekt Red has set up. All right, now we're at the point where we're going to be talking performance and bugs. And let's start with performance. I'm gonna show the specs that I played this game on right now. I played this game on PC. However, I made a point to check out the console performance and we'll be using other people's footage for this specific section of the video. This game is absolutely unplayable on last gen consoles and that really sucks. My experience is the game runs poorly in general despite my absolutely top tier hardware. There's a really bad render distance and there's no way to fix it. You damn near need DLSS to play this at a reasonable res resolution. AMD has optimization issues on the CPU side. There's no ray tracing for AMD on the GPU side. You really need some powerful hardware to make this game work at all. And 60 FPS is simply thrown out the window once you get behind the wheel and start driving. However, performance is one thing. Let's talk technical issues. Cyberpunk 2077 is simply put the buggiest game I have ever played. Yes, it is buggier than Skyrim. Yes, it is pretty much as buggy as Fallout 76, which I played briefly during a free period. I started playing the game on launch day. I finished to write this review 16 days after launch day. I assume this is the worst the game will ever be. However, for the sake of emphasis, I tried to track all my bugs, and I'm going to read them off again for emphasis. There were innumerable audio and visual bugs, which I'm not going to mention. I'm going to be focusing on bugs which legitimately affected the gameplay experience. I did a private stream for Jake on Cohesive Friendship Unit, and in the five minutes I showed him of the game, we found three bugs in five minutes. So let's talk about these bugs. Well, I had a bug where all guns were doing zero damage per second. I had a bug where health showed at zero, so I didn't know how much health I had. There were bugs where NPCs that were critical to quest lines simply didn't render. There were bugs where maps just showed nothing. Quest would just flat out break. Things where I couldn't interact with an object that I needed to interact with, things where NPCs would block you from proceeding, or things where people weren't spawning that were critical to pursuing the quest. And yeah, all of these required a straight up reload of the game, guys. There's a nudity bug where no matter what clothes I put on, I was just naked. I had three hard crashes where not only did the game just crash, but my entire computer shut down, which I've never had happen, and I know it's not a 3080 power issue. I have all that shit being monitored. Buying things and selling things simply would break. I would sell things and the thing would vanish from my inventory and I wouldn't get paid for it. I would buy things and pay for them. I wouldn't get them in my inventory. Assets straight don't load. Uh, there was one bug where for whatever reason, I was like up to people's knees. That was as tall as I was, and I had to relaunch the game to get that to resolve itself. There were non-responsive buttons where you could you would hit the prompt and you'd even see the little load thing where it is acknowledging that you're hitting the button, but then nothing would happen. I had a looped reload onto death where every time I reloaded, I would just insta-die. Uh, there were spelling errors in the script, and I was forced to drive in first person. The third person toggle just didn't work. When I played the game, I consider it to be redlining on Unplayable. At least once an hour, you get an issue that you need to reload the game to fix or just relaunch your computer because of a hard crash, and that adds up to at least 35 resets in my 35-hour playthrough before I wrote this game. Think about that, guys. 35 resets or just hard crashes in order to get through this game. That's pretty fucking bad. Good thing the load times are quick though, am I right? Let's talk conclusions for Cyberpunk 2077. When Cyberpunk gets it right, things can be quite enjoyable. Stunning visuals, immersive storytelling, and a unique journey where you are in control. Unfortunately though, this is rarely the case. Usually in Cyberpunk 2077, you find yourself waiting in awkward silence, frustrated with character building and role playing, and struggling to find an interesting gig. As a game, divorced of technical issues, Cyberpunk is simply middling. It's flat role-playing with ludonarrative dissonance which tears you out of the world with just okay combat. The game isn't bad, but it falls flat in critical ways, which it could have elevated itself above its contemporaries like Fallout 4. Unfortunately, I do not see this as a revolutionary game which leapfrogs its other predecessors. What you'll find is a lesser version of what you can find in other Western open-world RPGs. 
Unfortunately though, the game that has shipped to us is much worse than the game that I reviewed. The game we got is a corpo shit sandwich, an unfinished product forced out the door by Christmas by management. CB CDPR clearly doesn't give a fuck about its players. They care more about your dollar than providing a quality product and giving their employees a healthy work-life balance. And that, my friends, is not very cyberpunk.